How y'all feeling right now? Are you guys excited as I am right now? You better be excited. If you're excited right now, can you guys all put your hands together for Fat Joe? A little impromptu performance. I feel like I should just give you the mic and exit the stage. <laughs> you done? That's it? Drop the mic. All right, I'm out. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing, man? How are you is the question. Man, I'm tired as hell if you want me to answer it the right way. I, um, I've been promoting a new album, me and my sister Remy's album. and uh, So I done went from... <sighs> Texas to New Orleans, from New Orleans to Atlanta, from Atlanta to D.C., then I jumped on the bird six hours over here, and yeah. then I'm here. You hit where, and as she just asked, where Remy at? Remy, uh, Remy crazy, bro. <laughs> I right? I love her too, she's nuts. She, uh, damn, I don't know if I could tell you all her business like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a po it's positive. She it's got positive. a new, she got a new place, and she feel nice. like she don't gotta hire nobody. Why? So she, I Facetime her. She got a mask and a helmet on, and a hammer with some Balmain boots on. I'm like, yo, Ram. <laughs> I said, you playing yourself? She a man. real Just one. Get somebody to fix the house, man. Nah, she only she can do it how she wants it done. I feel Remy on that because I do the same thing. Well, congratulations, because we've been seeing you doing your thing with last year. I think the last time you came through here, you had just dropped all the way up. Remix wasn't even out yet, and we was just talking about it like, yo, it go. This is about to be a hit. And here we are a year later, Grammy noms. Double platinum. Yo. Word. Can we get another round of applause for double platinum? <laughs> so I know it's been like a crazy roller coaster this past year just with the success of it. Man, it's just been a beautiful thing, man. It's been a blessing from God, you know. Uh, I linked back up with my sister. Not only do we got all the way up, but we put together a classic album. Yeah. And we did it for the people, you know what I'm saying? Because it's been a while since the people heard a classic album. You know, I know they heard hot songs and singles, but could you really listen to a whole body of work and be like, yo, this is put together, this is quality. So we wanted to give that back to the fans, man. And um, I'm excited, man. I'm kissing babies. I'm telling everybody, <laughs> buy the album. Hey, but <laughs> you mess up, you, you give me your phone to take a selfie, I'm switching at the iTunes buying the album. <laughs> Come on, give me your thumbprint, give me your thumbprint for that. I'm like, yo, all right, bro. He's so crazy. So what is the next single off the album for you? Well, right now we got Money Showers. Money Showers number 15 in the country. Yes. And uh, and it's growing and it's climbing. Did you make that song for the strippers? Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I yeah. made the song because it sounded like a vibe. It okay. just was like a, you know, you had the Rouse Trans van. I don't want to do that. And then you go. And my part is in the money showers, rain, <laughs> Easy. rain, rain, rain. Like, I mean, it's, it's dope. Yeah, it is a definitely it's dope It's just track. dope music. Yeah. So how'd you hook up with Ty Dolla Sign for that? Oh, man, we, we, we know Ty for a long time. So we asked him to do it. He said, no problem. He did it right quick, sent it back. He's just a beautiful guy. You know, you... You run across Genuine. you run across a lot of jerks in this industry, yeah. and then one, every once in a while you meet you meet a good guy. You know what I'm saying? And Ty Dollar, he's the good guy. That's super dope. Well, you guys came together and made a definitely a dope track on that one. Man, now you in the dream. That's a different type of situation going on, right? <laughs> right. How did you guys come together? Because you know the dream is known for making hits. Well, what happened was I had did a show in uh in in la and it was big it was like a million people and it was all the edm guys yeah and then i went up in there and i caught a body but i mean like a body <laughs> i mean mean? <laughs> like i mean like you know one of them panda like <laughs> it was pandemonium <laughs> out there like, i'm all the way up like you yeah. know they was trying to kill themselves screaming it trying to dive off the top gate like it was like bananas yeah, right yeah, yeah. 
And so these two producers, the next morning I woke up in the hotel and they was waiting for me. And it was like, yo, Joe, yo, what's up? Can we talk to you? We fans, we was at the show. We want to produce something for you. And they and, and they the hottest, the hottest young producers in the EDM thing. Oh, wow. So I told them, listen, I need that reggae vibe. But then I need that, uh, uh, <laughs> and yo, they gave me exactly what I asked them for. Crazy. So now I had the joint. The joint's a hit. The beat is already a hit. So now I had to go get the best song right in. Like, you, I don't know if y'all know Dream wrote a bunch of hits for yes. Rihanna, bunch of hits for Beyonce. Yep. So he had always, he, he always would like uh, gas me and be like, yo, what up, Don? Whenever you ready. So I'm like, no, nah, I'm ready. <laughs> He's like, I'm always ready. I need you. So and then he did the hook. He sent it back same day. It was crazy. And I was like, oh, my God, we got it. You know what I'm saying? So it was only a matter of how me and Remy rapped on it. Because yeah. it was already a hit. It was, the beat was a hit. The hook was incredible. It was just a matter of how me thugged out Remy and thugged out Joe is going to rap on this. To fill it and in. And I think we mm -hmm. did it right. Yeah, it's definitely a smash. I love that record as well. Now, that's one thing I noticed about your album, that you do definitely have some notable features on there, like BJ. BJ Chicago 7, that song is crazy. Go right. Crazy. Right. And I did that. Once again, I did that for the people because the record was so dope. And what happened is, I don't know if y'all know, sometimes when you use samples, mm -hmm. these people try to stick you up, right? I don't know if they all doing well or not, or they like, oh, he used my song. Right. I'm rocking them. Right. Oh, you all the I way need my up? Check. I tried to call them too, like, yo, we all artists. They was like, man, listen, man. He <laughs> said we all artists. So nah. we used the flow of tree say yes. And we used the black street. Uh if you walk away. The, man, they robbed me on that song. And <laughs> I just said it was so dope. I ain't want to hold back. Yeah. So I said, forget it. Let's pay let's pay the bread and throw it on the album. But Cash it's really, out. really hot though. Super dope. And I love that. You and Remy pretty much have your classic styles, but you still brought in some youngsters like Ty and like BJ. That kind of oh man, and we brought some OGs. My favorite singer of all time, Stephanie Mills. She's on the outro of the album. She's nice. my favorite female singer of all time. So that was like a dream come true. I got my mother to call her, my aunts to call her. Yeah, she was like, "All right, Big Joe, I think I'm gonna do this." And I like Remy Ma. I was, yeah. like, oh! I was like, "Yes." And she did it. It was a dream come true, bro. A dream come true. Well, it's definitely a dope album. So if you haven't picked it up, y'all need to go pick that up. So ASAP. on your phone, it's called Plata or Plomo. Y'all got to represent that real music. I'm telling y'all. And the point is, I told this guy in the sandwich spot yesterday. I was in uh, Baltimore. And I was like, yeah, you know, we got an album. Oh, I love you on this. I said, well, you got to buy the album. He said, well, you know, I said, well, the problem is if you don't buy the album down, three weeks from now, you're going to buy the album because you're going to go <laughs> to the barbershop <laughs> and they're going to tell you it's the hottest album out. So you might as well do yourself the favor and, and buy the down. album first. Be up on it. Now, I wanted to ask you because I think everybody was excited to see you sign with Jay-Z or, or Rock Nation. Was getting him on the remix kind of like the, he like, yeah, I'm on Rock Nation. <laughs> you know, Damn. see that ice? No, so was getting him for the remix, was that kind of like a stepping stone to that or? Well, for me, yeah, that's what started it all. But for me, it's always been a dream for me to uh, rock with Jay-Z. Mm -hmm. So, when you know, when we was younger, you know, Fat Joe was a knucklehead. He was, he was, he was, he was a bad guy. Yeah. Right? And then, so we didn't see eye to eye for many years. And, um. So finally, we had been seeing any, seeing each other like two or three times, and was like, "Yo, what's up? What's up? What's up?" Yeah. So and then I had reached out to my knucklehead, which is Nori of, of the Drink <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> you know, you got your you got your knucklehead that'll say anything, right? So Nori's my guy. So I called Nori, and he called his knucklehead, Memphis Bleak, and told him, "Yo, I think Joe want to talk to Jay Z." So Jay Z called me in like ten minutes and was like, "What's up? Whatever you want to do, let's do it." Oh, wow. So I got him on a remix, and it was almost controversial because you, do you know how many people Everybody. was calling me to get on this remix? Because you had a smash. Like, I couldn't even tell you. Like, it was scary. My, yeah. My phone was going FaceTime, and then it, I was scared to answer <laughs> because it'd be like, I can't ex I would never tell you who because I feel like it would be like playing them. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm, huh? Yo, Joe, I need that track. I'm like, oh, no. Bad connection. 
Bad connection. Joe. It's crazy. B. I was scared, <laughs> man. Like everybody was hitting me. How can I tell everybody no? Like, yeah. It was, it was hard, but I just wanted to keep it me, Remy, and Jay Z. And I will say that once you put Jay Z on the track, I don't think you really need to explain anything. You know what I mean? No, I mean, I mean, it was some big boys calling. Like, I, we got to stop. We got. <laughs> it was the biggest on earth people calling. Like, yo, let me. Get the biggest on earth is what I'm trying to tell you. And I was like, oh my god, sorry, kid. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> really? Yeah, man. You should have slid them another track. I can't do that, but I got another one for you. Yeah, yeah. That would have nah, they, they wanted to get their hands on that all the way up. Of They're going to come back for the heartbreak, the joint with the gym. They're going to come <laughs> back for that. So besides music, I see you've been dipping your hands and been busy with other things. For instance, two TV shows coming? Yeah, I'm working. Man, I hope so. What do you mean? What's going on with that? No, it's just in progress. I don't know. I mean, you know, we're working on two TV shows. Uh, uh, one's about schooling the kids on hip hop because a lot of times these kids don't know where it come from. Mm -hmm. So you got to know where you come from to know where you're going. And another one is a nighttime show. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they, I just talk too much, right? I took because you heard about that. <laughs> I talk too much. But uh, yeah. Is yeah. it going to be like a late night talk show? One of them is. And the other one's going to be actually a classroom. Oh, wow. And little bad kids. And I'm going to be telling them about hip hop. Are you going to be like smacking them with a ruler? No, nah, I'll never <laughs> smack them. <laughs> I would. I mean. Man, nah, my teacher. <laughs> I'm just saying. We had a teacher one time. I still think about him, man. We drove this man crazy, man. What'd I you mean, do? like, nah, we was bad, man. We was <laughs> bad, man. It was a bad thing, man. I remember he flipped one day. He was like, Joseph Carter Jada <laughs> through the chair. What? Joseph! The principal came and had to take him. We never seen him again. I know I drove that man crazy, man. Have you seen the stories lately about the teachers like flipping out in the classroom, like teachers flexing with their students and fighting? Like I've been seeing those listening. daily. I drove a kid. A, he's probably in a mental institution. <laughs> like, we drove this dude so crazy. He said, Joseph Carter Jada! He threw the chair against the wall. I was like, oh, my God. I thought he was going to kill me or something. <laughs> so I was like 10. Like, I was like, but that was it. I was like, I was like, oh, my God. Whatever happened to that, man? So afterwards, did you start acting better, or were you still same old Joe? Man, we was bad, man. We was bad, man. <laughs> we, we, we was bad guys, man. You know, I'm a rehabilitated soul. Man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, it's real sh Yeah, I'm Joey Crack. I'm I'm rehabilitated. That's where I got the name from, too, from that same classroom. When he cracked the chair? No, I swear to God. <laughs> what? No, because I always been fat. So every time a teacher would tell me to write something on the board, my pants are sagging, and the crack of my ass is show. <laughs> so the girls was always making fun of me, and they'd be like, Joey, crack, Joey. And then I just like the name. <laughs> That's a no, true don't, story. Don't say that. Google it. <laughs> I can't call you Joey Crack now. That's like it's, it's crazy, man. It's it's disgusting, man. I be on a <laughs> I be on the plane with my family. They be out ahead. They don't even want to. They don't even want to. Uh, they don't want to own up to me. Really? They be like, I get up to go to the bathroom, my whole ass out. They like <laughs> my daughter, ten years old. She be like, Daddy, come on now. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's. A, it's it's genetic or something. I think we got to get you a belt for Christmas. Come on. Yo, I'm telling you, I got the best belt. It's just, just, <laughs> just no, it don't matter. I try, though. Every time I try to, I try. That's so adorable. Well, also, congratulations. I know you opened up a sneaker store in New York. Yes, yes. That I was a long time coming. I had a sneaker store in New York, up in YC. You know, we built, we, we the store looked like the Hamptons in the middle of the hood. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I got a museum there and everything. And, and, you know, I just feel like our people should be represented the right way. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And we don't, we don't pick up our prices. We keep it at box price. So we don't rob nobody. So sometimes when you want those sneakers, those right there, when you want those bad, they want to charge you $100, 200 more. more. Nah, we don't do that. And we're doing just fine just charging box price. You know, sometimes people go off of greed, you know? Yeah. So you mean, wait, wait, wait. Did you just say that you got, like, old that you can't find and you're charging retail prices for? 
all my sneakers is retail in the store, so we don't charge over. So if the box says you're supposed to charge $200, we charge $200. So a lot of stores sell them for $400, $500. Yeah, bit, yeah we just do the $200. We don't play with that. We for the people, man. We always been for the people. So you going to open another one in the Bay Area, son? We're going to try. Because I know it's a couple of Yeezys that I need. Like, Nah, we're going to try, man. It's, I know it sounds too good to be true, but it's the truth. I think that you, know? you would be the one to have the first sneaker retail chain across the country. I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to. I think uh, I think I've been playing myself. I think uh, the... I've been looking at how that store been making money. I've been like, damn, if I'd have had 20 of these, I wouldn't be rapping no more. <laughs> hey, you know what's funny? Speaking of sneakers, I thought I heard a story about Mike Vivi once put you in a headlock over some sneakers. Hey, yo, hey, yo Uncle Dan, <laughs> you been talking to her? Like, yo, this, yo, it's crazy. I collect sneakers. Yeah. So I actually have a company called Sneaker Addict. Yeah. There's no room in my house. There's no room in my garages. I got a three-car garage that's flooded with sneakers, right? Yeah. So just so that y'all know, I'm really, really about this sneaker Sneak. thing, mm -hmm. right? So a good friend of mine, a basketball player, Mike Bibby, he always kept begging me for like 10 years. Yo, come to my house. Come to my house in Arizona. Come. So one day I got a show in Arizona. I go to his house. This guy got a whole house for sneakers, a whole house for sneakers, <laughs> okay so now I, I've told you all about my sneakers I'm like a sneaker crackhead I ain't got nothing like Mike Bibby's sneakers he got what? a house and then he don't even let his kids in there like so he come out with the keychain like an old grandmama and he's like <laughs> and he's oh <laughs> and he pull a key out <laughs> he got like six seven locks I'm like yo what? Yo, so I'm like, yo, what's up with this dude? Yo, yo, Mike, what's wrong? Nah, 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 nah. They want to get in here, you know. So, so now he was he was drinking. He was I caught him on a drunk night, but he don't really drink. Mike Bibby does not drink. I've hung out with him a hundred times, he don't drink. So I don't want you to get the wrong idea. But this night, he was lit. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just because Mike Bibby looked like small on TV because he played against Shaq. He's actually bigger than us, and he's cock diesel, yeah. right? So just keep that in mind, too. So I go up in there. Well, he opens that door, man. It looked like Home Depot. The ceiling <laughs> the ceiling was so high with sneakers. I was like, I, I caught anxiety. Like, I start, <laughs> no, I start, Sorry, you're in a nervous I start sweating, like, yeah. sweating on my head, like anxiety. I was like, oh, my God. Like, imagine <laughs> you were crackhead and you just went into a mountain of crack like I'm like I'm losing it I'm like oh my god oh she was like get whatever you want so I, I step back Boom. Wait. <laughs> so now I go and I jump up I don't know how I jump up whap I grab this pair I put it down I jump over here whap grab this other pair I go down here whap grab this other pair Next thing you know, he's trying to choke me. Yo, yo, yo. So he's choking me. I'm like, yo, Mike, what's up? No, no. So I don't want to, could I curse here, though? You're no, okay. we got kids. So he's like, F you, man. F you, man. So everybody looking like, yo, Mike, what's what up? His, his yeah. brothers is like, yo, you got 5,000, 10,000 pairs? No. He said, no. <laughs> so I'm like, so I'm like, yo, Mike, what's wrong, man? You invited me here for 10 years. <laughs> Let me have these, right? <laughs> He's like, yo, no, no, but listen. He said, so everybody don't know. I know what's up. Mm -hmm. I, I tell you the truth, I know what's up, why he was acting like that. But everybody else don't. So they're like, yo, you over, what's wrong with you, Mike? You don't be. He said, I wouldn't go to his house and take his platinum plaques. I wouldn't go to his house. I'm like, yo, but Mike, you invited me, man. What's <laughs> wrong? So basically, the sneakers I had put picked yeah was like one of ones that like the most exclusive <laughs> sneakers in the world like i caught the one of ones i was like so he was like yo i wouldn't go to your house to take your platinum plaque he said Seriously? you're the piece of sh you taking my best ones you i told you you could get whatever you want you want your own. <laughs> so he let me take one pair of the main one of ones and I took a, I took a dope pair of sneakers but I mean he was pissed at me man he was, 
But I knew why. That's love, though, that he let him go. Sneaker collector, he let me get up here, and then I took a couple of other regular joints. But the, the, the see, one of ones means only one, one was pair. ever made. Yeah. So he got like three of them. So I grabbed all of them. Because <laughs> you wanted to make sure you're the only one. <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, yo, I hit lotto. Like, yeah. I was like, yo, yo. And then he just lost it. Yeah. Because he knew. He said, yo, this guy, like, took the Lamborghini of sneakers. Like, <laughs> you like, tripping. You know better. I love Mike Bibby, though. So now to this day, have you invited him to your house? Man, I ain't got nothing for Mike Bibby. Mike Bibby got more sneakers. He got, like, ten times more sneakers than me. I'll give him anything. But he got, he ain't, man, nobody got more sneakers than Mike Bibby, man. <laughs> Impossible. Well, speaking of Mike Bibby, which you just reminded me about the NBA, and you know I'm an NBA fan, what do you think your Knicks are going to do this season? What's up with Melo? It's too late to ask me that. If you would have asked me that at the beginning of the season, I'd have told you we'd have made it to the second round of the playoffs. But it looks like we ain't making no playoffs. Oh. Yeah, I know you feel bad Not for Not really. <laughs> As a Warriors fan, so do you think that, feel me, we are in the bay. So, <laughs> so let me ask you in the finals, because you know the Warriors are definitely going to be there. You gonna Warriors going to take the chip. That's a fact. That's my boy. That's what I'm talking about. You heard it here first. Now, I ain't going to lie to you. They're going to take the chip. I think they're going to take it for a couple of years, though. Like, not even now. Like, I knew that the minute they made that move. With KD. That KD move is <laughs> <laughs> that thing is serious, right? That Every was like the best. Like, what are you sport doing? You I can't ever. even play them in 2K, right? Because <laughs> I don't like to cheat, so I don't go for the Warriors in 2K. But whoever played me be coming back with the whap, like a model. They shoot with Curry from half whap. When yeah, I'm like, yo, come everything. on, B. Like, even the game ain't fair. <laughs> So do you think that the Knicks then should trade Carmelo? Do you guys need to restart? No, nah, I don't think this is Carmelo's fault, to be honest with yeah. you. First of all, Carmelo don't play defense, and you know that. Yeah. You knew when you signed him he don't play defense. Right. Now you're looking for him to score. The guy been scoring 30 points a game. Right. It really ain't his fault. You know, Derrick Rose is in his last year of a contract, so he's looking to score. He's not looking to really pass the ball. Right. Um, That's sad because he's a great player. Now, Porzingis... We thought he was going to be way much better than he is at this point. I'm sure he he been hurt all year. Maybe next year he'll come back better because he, he's really, really talented. I thought we were going to do really, really, really good this year. I, 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 I can't believe it. Like, I don't th they just ain't playing together, you know. But to blame it on Melo, Melo is actually the only guy doing what he's supposed to do, consistent. score 20-plus points. That's it. Consistent. So they want to trade the guy, you know, it's a four guy, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Yeah. They He's trying the to make him the fall guy. Yeah. Well, one thing I will say about you that I appreciate, you always saying something wild. But you don't always just say it in person. You also say it on Twitter. So it's times like this that I like to play again. <laughs> Look at his face. He's <laughs> like, wait a minute. I might need your glasses for this. <laughs> uh. I just need you to pull your card. These cards are your tweets. <laughs> your tweets. This is my aunt nobody can see. <laughs> This Read it to the crowd and just explain to us house of mine. the moment, what you meant, and just behind what you were thinking behind the tweet. I still scratch my head. I just did that right now, right? Being around modern day rappers who dress like Mick Jagger, <laughs> speak soft like Prince, and drink, yeah. We got a problem out here, man. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? We got a problem, bro. It's a problem. You feel like it's... And what happens is sometimes when I see the young... I watch this young rapper who... I actually like their music. Like, mm -hmm. I don't hate on these young boys. They, they, whatever music... See, the thing about hip-hop music is so dope because it's so diverse. Yeah. See, one of my favorite rappers of all time... My, let me put it to you like this. My favorite rap song of life is called The Vapors by Biz Marquee. Wow. But Biz Marquee also had a song called Pickin' Boogers. <laughs> so any nigga in his right mind would have been hearing Pickin' Boogers like, yo, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> right, like, right, right. So I get it. I get what these young boys are doing. There's nothing wrong with that. 
But I watched one young boy. He had the red, purple hair. He had a skirt on. And he was like, yo, the OGs, they don't want to evolve. They don't want to get with it. I was like, no, my man. If I was 18 right now, I wouldn't have pink hair and a skirt on, B. I wouldn't be doing that right about now. So pretty much that's what that tweet was about. So you're basically saying you ain't got to do that much extra to make it. I don't know what these dudes is doing. <laughs> <laughs> they figured something out. Like, right. I mean, nah, I don't know. These guys are bugging out. And then these niggas is so hot. <laughs> right? And it makes so you hot that you ever seen the movie Weekend at Bernie's? The nigga yes. was dead and they was yes. driving him around? <laughs> They'd be like, Joe Crack, this is such and such. He'd be <laughs> like, yo, this nigga's weak, weekend at Bernie's, nigga. It's the fucking Grammys. <laughs> this nigga's just crazy. And I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Nowadays, I... <laughs> you bad, man. Nowadays, I appreciate rappers firing shots on songs uh opposed to ts back in the day coming to your block and stripping niggas naked yeah. <laughs> that's a two-sided question there have you seen a rapper get stripped naked a rapper get stripped naked no okay okay um that's just a figure of speech right 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 but listen we rehabilitated man we nice guys now <laughs> Like, really, really nice guys. Yeah. You know, we just did All-Star Week NBA. We performed me and Ram. Yeah. You know how hard it was to perform in the All-Star Week? They thought, they believed the tweets, man. Oh, really? And when we did it, we was the nicest. They was like, yo, the nicest, most professional people we ever dealt with. Thank you so much. God bless you. Please think of us again. But, yeah. you know, we be bugging out. This is why they be thinking this stuff like that. Because of your tweets? Because I be bugging out. <laughs> I'm fried too. <laughs> so silly. It says uh, liberals blame guns for the Orlando shooting. Conservatives blame ra radicalism, but rather every debate daily murders in Chicago. Right. Right. I'm gonna tell you, I didn't write that. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you I didn't write that. What happened was, I'm going to tell you what happened to me too, right? Being that I'm so busy, yeah, I had some people looking after some of my social media. And um, and what w I didn't even notice, one day I was, I was chilling, and one of my boys who really loves me picked up and said, yeah, well, what you doing? And I said, what you mean? He was like, you talked about the kid that, uh, the, the Kirk Patrick's, this, that this protesting against the thing. I said, I never talked about Kirkpatrick. What are you talking yeah. about? And I looked at my Twitter, so I had to fire that guy. Obviously, oh. I slipped on that one because he's the same guy. So it's one thing to post what I tell you to post, but it's another one thing to act like you know what Fat Joe's saying. Yeah. That's not true. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, I can't even relate to that tweet right there, to yeah. be honest with you. So sometimes us artists, we be having like social media teams, and some of them need to get fired like homeboy got fired, you know? Basically, don't get fired like that. Yeah, it puzzles me why people don't go uh, get this enraged with children getting murdered from stray bullets every day in the hood. Well, the truth is, right? Mm -hmm. That's another one I ain't right. But listen, but the truth <laughs> is, this is the truth is, nah, this real talk. I mean, the niggas <laughs> fired. That's a fact. <laughs> He's fired because I would never say no shit like that. Like, right, right. I believe in everybody's right to protest, everybody's right to, as long as it's peaceful, to speak up. You know what I mean? And and we had a terrible year with cops killing kids and all that. Now, right. I can't tell you every cop is bad. Right. Because I know some good cops. But the the. The, the shit that was going on out here last year was out of control. So I knew one billion percent I wasn't with them tweets. But one thing I can say is that um, we got to do something about our youth killing each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we got to talk to them and we got to know what our kids is doing all the time. And I know a lot of times our, par our parents... 
got two, three jobs because they got to pay all the bills. But you got two, three jobs to pay the bills to take care of this little kid that you don't know what he's doing or getting into. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's always important to have communication with your kids. It's always important to, you know, know what they up to. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, it's all about our kids. If you got kids, you know what I'm talking about. It's all about our kids. So, you know, um, and, you know, it's terrible what's going on down there in Chicago. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Where they're killing people more than they're killing people in Iraq. Yeah. And a lot of these kids, because at one time when I was a kid, I had no hope. I didn't know I could do something. I didn't know there was better for me. Right. You know, I grew up in the projects. I had nothing. I had no money. Nobody in my family ever made it. You know, so I thought it was like, yo, I'm going to end up in jail. Or I'm going to end up dead. So I know where they're coming from, where the mentality's from. But as soon as you get it, you ever notice even those guys with that mentality, yeah. when they get to a certain age, they change and they start thinking about life and be Different. like, oh, wait mm -hmm. a minute. You know, I made it to 25. Yeah. You know, uh, maybe I should change now. But, make you know, most 30. of them won't make it to 25 or 30. So we got to we gotta do something about it. Yeah. It's hard to even talk about that because I personally can relate to that. My boy just got killed on Tuesday. So, yeah. Nah, this shit crazy, man. It's, it, nah, it is, man. Because uh, it ain't nothing new. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got pictures. That's the sad part. I got pictures with 35 of us and 30 of them is dead. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That I grew up with. So, you know, my mom's got pictures in, the, in, in, in my house with me and a bunch of kids, and I'm the only one alive. You know, you know what I'm saying? But it ain't nothing new, but we got to do something about it somehow. Man, this is a double one. This is a... Uh, I take screenshots and save all these Twitter gangsters. Shit. <laughs> Y'all tell you something. I've never been disrespected in my face. Right. Never. Though. Right. Like, I mean, I don't care if I had beef with 50 Cent. I never heard a person go, G, -G, -G unit while I'm in it. <laughs> Nobody ever play with me. No, I'm serious. But you were real. I Yo, can see why. I can nobody see. don't play with me, B. I'm just keeping it real with you. And when I be getting on Twitter and all that, they be like, you fat bastard, I smack your cheek off. I just, I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Where are these people at? Did and you hear the story about, uh, what's his name? What's the boxer's name? Yusuf Bell or whatever his name was. Uh, he's an Usain Bolt? You, not Usain Bolt. Yosef or something like that. I forgot his name, but he's an openly gay boxer who went to the barbershop to find the Twitter troll and beat him down. There's some cock diesel gay dudes, man. <laughs> Yo, I'm just saying, I let think me everybody. Tell you something. <laughs> I go to this restaurant in LA. It's so good. It's a it's a healthy restaurant, but it's definitely gay owned and it's in the gay community, right? West Hollywood. But they make yeah, yeah, it's called Corn Grill. Yeah. This shit is banging. Yeah. Right? So I go up in there, I don't bother nobody. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I know who Try I to am. Eat. Yeah, I'm Joe <laughs> Crack, right? So I eat my food. And one of my mans was with me. He was like, yo, man, it's a lot of gay. I said, yo. Be quiet because it's some cock diesel niggas <laughs> right next door, and they will fuck you up, my man. <laughs> like, ain't nobody fucking. Yo, I'm telling you, them niggas pound you out. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. You are the minority in this section. <laughs> Joe was like, I don't want it. It's your last one, baby. I'm telling you, you don't want them boys to come over, man. I'm telling you, this shit crazy. Social, social media has been both a blessing and, yeah. So what happens is any artist out there, mm -hmm. right? I, I notice I don't read it, but it's, I know what they it says. They know what it is. So social media is a big blessing because you could promote yourself for free. Right. It's free. It used to cost money for that, a lot of money for that. And then back in the days, it wasn't social media. You got to be on every corner giving a fly out, yeah. man to man, person to person. Now you just blast it out to the world on social media. And you know how many people I meet that uh, just yesterday, I was in Atlanta, and I seen Young Jock and the comedian, show this show day, <laughs> right? That's my man, though. He funny, right? So, yeah, shout hey, right? That nigga <laughs> crazy, right? I walked up in there. I was like, oh, shit, they gave Shorty a job. Listen, Shorty, you got to pay child support now, boy. You got on the papers. 
So I'm chilling in there, and I was, and I was like, yo, how y'all get this spot? They was like, well, we was just putting up posts on social media, and the owner of the station came and got us. So those are stories that you know you know that you could use social media to your benefit. Yeah. I mean, then you could use social media and get robbed like Kim Kardashian for a four million dollar ring. Yeah. So it's a lot of that going on. Yo, see you. I'm going to Chicago. Like, oh word, let's break in their house. <laughs> so it's a gift and a curse. Well, Joe. Thank you so much for sliding through. As I said, it's I always. I thank y'all for putting up with me. I'm just so tired because I've been I've been moving and shaking a lot. But I appreciate y'all. If you don't got the album, go get the album. If you got the album, then you already know it's fire. So you better <laughs> tell your friends that it's crazy and um and look out for Remy's solo album. So right after this, we coming. And she going, she, she, you know. <laughs> she got some fire on deck. Yeah. We got fire on deck, but we want the super fire, the force field. I want that the first time you hear her solo record, the very first time, there's no question, no doubt that you like, oh, my God, this, she's over. She's this a monster. Is, we don't know Remy no more. <laughs> yeah, she's gone. You know, and that's what I'm looking for for her. I got I to gotta get her that. You know, what's that song I was singing? I'm in love with your body. Uh, everywhere you go, you hear that thing, boy. Like, we need one of those. Any more appearances from you on Love & Hip Hop? From me? Yeah. I'm no hell no, but listen. <laughs> I saw you, I was like, Joe. Remy called me up and was like, yo, I'm outside your store. <laughs> Don't get, I have some cameras with me. What? They come up in my office, cameras is on. I'm like, yo, hey, what's going on? And <laughs> I didn't even know. I mean, me personally, and with no disrespect, because I know that's everybody's pet peeve. I don't care who you, everywhere I go, people be like, yo, man, I love Remy Pat, I love that. They watch it. I personally don't watch it. Yeah. I don't even watch the Kardashians. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I personally, I'm watching something about money or something, man. You know, I'm watching. If it ain't, it's got to be something about some money. <laughs> He's like, I ain't Yeah, that. I ain't trying to play with these things. And then give them ideas. And, you know, I'm listening. Man, they crazy, man. I remember personally, um, I saw one episode one day of somebody I really love that was on one. And I was just like, man, I, I damn near cried, man. I walked back. I walked back to my room like, shh, man down. Man, man, <laughs> man down. That was silly. Man down. I was, I, you know, because sometimes these guys... See, Remy and Papoose, man, they did it so good because people were like, really, it was really bethunery going on. Yeah. It was really, they, you know what they used to call it? Train wrecks. The, yeah. Like reality shows was train wrecks. Like, yeah. it was like, it was like, yeah, it you was like, like yo, we're going to, let's see the latest train wreck. I swear to God. And they knew it. Like, yeah. yo, you're signing to train wreck. Like, That's you know, crazy. and they knew it. But, you know, when Remy and Pap did it, I said, because Remy is, Remy has reformed, she is rehabilitated, but she will wash one of them girls so <laughs> fast. But I mean, in a microscopic of a second. Split so I second. sat down where I was like, you sure you're going to do this? <laughs> yeah. And she was like, nah, Joe, we're going to do it different. I didn't know what she meant, but it was a blessing for her. Yeah. And we needed that because it's, it's you never get to see, you know, young black couples to stay together, that love each other. She went through jail, seven years of jail. Yeah. Her husband was there for her every single visit. They got a beautiful wedding together, and they just showing people. She's ba basically, you know, if you let me tell it, you know, Remy is like uh, such of a blessing, not just for herself, but for young black and Latinas, mm -hmm. you know, because they all gonna go through these problems but they got to know that, yo, look, Ram went to jail with real murderers. Yeah. And she came out and she made something of her life. Yeah. So, you know, it's motivating and it's, and it's very inspirational what she's doing. So I try to tell her all the time. Like, I be like, yo, Ram, man, you doing something is bigger. I got a friend. He, he got cancer. And uh, he's a DJ in New York. He's not a DJ, a host. His name is Pretty Lou. And every night he does the clubs. And in the morning he's taking the chemotherapy it's and all crazy. that. And I be like telling Pretty Lou, yo, Pretty Lou, I respect what you're doing, but more than that, you're inspiring thousands and thousands of people who going through the same thing 
and you letting them know they can fight it and they yeah. can have a chance. Yeah. And that's how I feel about Remy with her whole life and her whole, she's just inspiring people, man. And it's a beautiful thing. Joe, every time I sit down with you, I always feel like I leave with something new, learn something about myself and my life that I can apply. And it's always a great time. It's very important to share knowledge. Seriously. Right? Um, it's very, very important because uh, I'll go right back at it again. Black and Spanish people, they get an upper hand on something and they act like they don't want to tell somebody else to better themselves. Yeah. It's the craziest shit I ever seen in my life. <laughs> and it's the dumbest shit I ever seen in my life. Yeah. Because if all of us would be doing well, nobody won't be robbing nobody, nobody won't be hurting nobody, everybody be happy, everybody be doing their thing. So you gotta, you know what I'm saying? When you got a little step up, Yo, bro, don't walk out that door. I got burnt over there. Like, there's a real fire behind that door. Go out this right. way. Right. You know, that. that's the little things that you could do to, to help. You know what I'm saying? Well, we are definitely excited for your new album. Definitely excited to see what 2017 Woo! brings you. <laughs> Any last words you want to say to the people before we let you go? Um, get the album, man. And not not only that, man, Bay Area, thank you so much, man, for supporting me for so many years, man, and supporting Terror Squad, whether it was Big Pun, whether it's Rem, whether it's Cali. You know what I'm saying? We really, 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 really appreciate y'all. And and uh if you think you're forgotten, you're not. You right. know, the Bay Area is very important to the hip hop culture, the hip hop scene. Uh, for years, I remember growing up in the Bronx and just getting on my first record deal. They'd be like, yo, man, if you ain't banging in the Bay, you ain't banging. And that's <laughs> all the way in the Bronx, my nigga. Like, yeah. It was like, yo, B. And uh, uh, I I remember uh, when we went for the Grammy, when Pun was alive, rest in peace, Pun, uh, he flew in a girl from here to do his hair. And uh, he, he showed her a picture of Drew Down. And he was like, yo, I want the finger waves. <laughs> no, it's on the it's on the internet. We yeah. went to the Grammys, he had the finger, finger waves. waves. Yeah. He got some black chick from the bay. We flew her in. <laughs> the hype was she did used to do Drew Down's braid, uh, uh finger waves. And he went and got the finger waves. <laughs> so it's like, you know, you know, the bay, man, y'all, y'all, y'all been setting trends forever, man, and we love y'all, man. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming through. Once again, y'all, can y'all all put your hands together for Fat Joe?